Hi there, Dave Rawlings here of the London Longsword Academy and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd's Stuff. Now you may notice two things there. Todd's Workshop, this is your high-end museum reproduction stuff that he's made which you would expect to see immaculate into a museum collection. And then Todd's Stuff which is the more easily accessible budget material. Now for example one of these here this is a Todd Stuff. This is the only one I have from Todd Stuff that I'm going to show you today. This is a dagger that I got for lockdown so we could practice Achille Marozzo online on our Zoom sessions, which still continue to this day. And it's a simple short quill and dagger, short in cross and also in blade length, not particularly long at all. Okay. As with pretty much everything that I've ever seen from Todd Stuff, it is First of all, very, very well put together. There is no wobble in fit or finish. Okay, you can see the space there, but there is no movement whatsoever. All of the fittings very, very solid. A nice diamond section, plain as anything, but it's very, very good and well made, very simple. The leather work on this, I believe, is over cord, and it's not the straightest seam in the world, but then you wouldn't expect to see that for the price you're paying. This is still pretty much better than anything on the market for the money, in my opinion. Very, very good. Always comes with a little sheath or scabbard, and they are nice. Obviously, the good thing about doing lessons on Zoom was we got to run around, around with sharp things, and it's worth mentioning Todd does offer a sharpening service on the daggers you can buy from him. So you may notice that the video is called Todd's Great Mistake, and believe me, I will get onto this. But before that, let's have a look at some other stuff. So this is the first dagger that I ever bought from Todd. Um, I think I was at a fair with Matt Easton, and we had a look at his, his stall at this said fair, and this was absolutely lovely. As I say, it's the bollocks. Now, there's a few things that I'll go through on this. First of all, obviously the scabbard, or the sheath, is, as you'd expect from Todd, very nicely made. Slight spacing here, but he has gone to the effort of making it shape the little bollocks here, and they are lovely, delicate little bollocks, believe me. This, I believe, is ebony. Now, this is an interesting thing. There's a few things that I talk about this with this. First of all, obviously, you're going to have to put your thumb on this if you're stabbing anyone with intention who is in any way wearing anything other than a shirt or anything, because this is smooth. And I have a student who, not with me on my tad, at home in an accident, accidentally cut themselves badly by hitting a kitchen knife down like this and their hand sliding off down the blade. And I do not believe that these little bollocks would be enough to stop your hand from sliding the blade if you impacted on anything pretty solid. But, still lovely. And you'll notice here the way that it almost, the blade comes organically out of the hilt just due to the fact that Todd has made this nice little curve into the bollocks. And I am enjoying saying bollocks this much, believe me. Now, very interesting triangular section blade with this. It comes out of a very thick square section and then into this triangular section and it's a horrible, horrible wedge. And there's something interesting about this. Now, first of all, obviously, it is clearly a primarily stabbing weapon, however, one of the things that I've noted um, by doing some test cuts with rather thick leather is that against something that has solid material underneath, so somewhere like a face or a hand, you can still do an enormous amount of tissue damage to whatever you impact on. On the softer, softer areas, I don't think this is going to do so much, but if you're hitting someone in the hand or you're hitting someone in the face, this is still going to mess them up quite nicely and it's going to cut them quite savagely. It will not cut the more padded areas very deeply, let's put it that way. But a very, very interesting piece and very, very lovely. So the next thing that I bought from Todd, and this will lead me onto a slight rant and I'm going to have fun with this one. So this is Balanvir, and again, Todd has done a very lovely thing here. He's inset the nagel into the sheath, which is very, very cool. Sturdy, plain stitching, little bit of embossing. My fault, I bought this knife and I absolutely loved it and then I left it somewhere for safe storage and I allowed it to get a little bit rusty so I haven't cleaned it fully properly yet. So very lovely the way he's worked the tang into this or whichever spacing he's used to go alongside the tang. It may be the tang itself, it may be some extra embellishment but he has this lovely zigzag pattern that then comes into this beautiful bit of jimping on the back of the blade here. So I often wonder with um, nagels on swords 
Whether the development of the Nagel into the cross guard was, as an ev was an evolution, i.e. you have something where you've gone, well, if I'm doing this and this stops my hand sliding along the blade, well, conveniently, that also may stop me from receiving a blow to the hand if I hold the blade slightly in profile like so, and I back it here. Or whether the two things developed separately. Somebody just go, it's much safer having that on your hand, I'd have that, mate. That would keep your hand much safer. Also, it might stop your hand sliding down if you were using it. I don't know, but it's an interesting thing. So, potentially, the Nagel is a precursor to the cross guard. Perhaps they just de developed independently. No idea, but interesting. So this very, very useful for allowing you to do anything where you're accidentally going to allow your hand to slide along the blade. I know this has happened to one of my students, as I said, thankfully nothing to do with me, a household accident. But here, this is a very, very useful thing should you impact suddenly on something solid when you're cutting or doing your accidental stabbing of things. Okay, so an absolutely lovely knife as usual. Very, very happy with it. The next thing I bought from Todd, and again, this is my um, research piece that I got as something to do in lockdown as well. Beautiful little finish to the scabbard. Sturdy, but interesting, interesting stitching on this. And rondels, as you can see. Now, I have opinions about rondels, which you may have noticed from previous um, videos. Some people have said that they're there to stop you from having the dagger prized out of your hands. And eh, yeah, well, I can see that, except that there's an awful lot of prizing of rondel daggers out of people's hands in, in manuals. It's, it's a thing. It happens an awful lot. So I'm not sure that that is its best use. It might be if someone's trying to grab hold of it here, it might keep it secure. But certainly if someone's using the leverage, particularly on a longer rondel, that's not going to be its best use. So I'm still fairly convinced that its best use is ultimately going to be for hand protection. You get a large amount of hand protection that covers the entirety of the hand, unlike a cross, which only really covers in one plane. And I'd like to point out other martial cultures who have created round things and put them on swords in order to protect hands. This is not a new idea, nor is it a purely European one, isolated and unique to this weapon. So here, very good for keeping your hand protected from that space, very good for protecting this side as well, or better than anything that is smaller, okay? So the other thing that's been said, which I feel is actually an, accompli uh, an accompaniment to my argument, rather than a counterpoint to my argument, is that this would be it's to stop you from getting stabbed through the little spaces in your gauntlet. Yeah, it's protecting your hand, isn't it? That's what it's there for. So again, I think this reinforces my point rather than goes against it. A very, very interesting blade on this. Lovely hollow ground, again, coming from this thick square section and grounded down. And utterly beautiful. Again, not primarily a cutting weapon, but still capable of doing a good cut. And again, I'm gonna suggest that your primary areas of cutting are gonna be areas where it is solid underneath. So again, face, hands, wrists, things where you can do damage to radial areas, this kind of thing. It's still gonna cut, it's not its primary focus, but it's still capable of. And again, this is something where I think very similar to rapiers, we need to look at what the fuck is the blade that is on, that is on this thing, rather than Rondels do this, bollocks do this. Look at the blade type, look at it individually and separately from the hilt design as we go through. But this one, again, primarily thrusting, a little bit of cut because it has those profiles to it. Absolutely wonderful thing. I have no idea whether this little cutout is decorative or whether it has some other cryptic use, no idea, okay? One of the things I would point out as well with Rondels is you can hold them very comfortably like this and you see this in treaties. You don't have to hold it like this. You can hold them delicately. A wonderful piece. Now, I said that I would talk to you about Todd's great mistake. That is a terrible, terrible thing and it needs to be addressed. I ordered a dagger from Todd. It wasn't this one. This one got sent to me. I'm so glad it was. It's I, unfortunately I don't get to keep this. This has got to go, I believe, to Indianapolis. Um, but this is a very, very interesting piece. Todd got this, um, or rather, Todd made this to satisfy his own itch. It isn't set uh, based on a particular museum piece. This is a an amalgam of lots of little things that Todd wanted to do. And I saw it on his website, and I bought the ring. Um, ring-hilted basilard instead. Whoever gets this is incredibly lucky. There is this 
thing that I do periodically is when I can afford it, I ask a smith to make me a custom piece. And the first thing I say to them is, do what you want to do with it, because I, I want to see what you would do given the opportunity and given your expertise and your experience, not my opinions. And this is really interesting because this is Todd taking his knowledge, his expertise and his opinion of things that he likes in daggers and putting them into practice. And I am absolutely gutted that I didn't actually take this myself. One of the reasons I didn't get this is I have a tendency towards liking um, daggers that I think are a little bit unusual that I want to look into as research pieces. However, there is just something about this, the way that it fits in the hand, the the feel of this, I don't know if it's ebony and horn or what he's made this out of, but it's, it's just these two layers are immaculately put together and still with some extra spiraling work beneath this. And this almost bottle cap, which doesn't do it justice, how beautifully finished this is and the details here. And another thing, as I say, that put me off of getting this in the first place, it's very, very similar price to the one that I ordered, is that the blade on this looked very simple. And it is, but it just has something so well finished to it. The gentle curves of the spine are just absolutely lovely. And you can't appreciate this unless you hold it. So Todd's big mistake is that he sent this to me, and my big mistake is that I didn't buy it. And it's a masterpiece. Whoever gets this, I am so, so jealous of you. I know that the thing that turns up from him, the Basilard I ordered, is going to be stunning. But this, if I had, it, had the opportunity to ask Todd to do what he wanted to, I would have. Interestingly, quite a short piece in comparison to some of the other stuff, like the Wallace, as I said, in comparison even to the simple Quill and Dagger. But it feels so nice. This is like holding a high-end piece of jewellery that can kill, but it's not flimsy. It does not feel flimsy. This feels so, so goddamn solid. It almost grows out of your hand. So, if you aren't aware of Todd's stuff and Todd's workshop, you need to be. Do go and check them out. We are very, very fortunate that for us, particularly with Brexit, that we have him in, in this country and that his material remains accessible to us in a way that some other Smiths isn't at the moment. But this is absolutely stunning. All of these are stunning, but you in Indianapolis, I believe, I am jealous of you. I am very, very glad that this is gonna be on its way to you. I'm going to oil it up. It's gonna be wrapped incredibly carefully. Please folks, thank you Todd for letting me review this. Look at his stuff. If you have the finances to buy yourself one, get them because they are remarkable collector's pieces. If you want something which is more functional and affordable, get anything from Todd's work, Todd's stuff rather, because also very, very good for the money. Have a good day. Take care.